they lied to us. Bitcoin isn't an inflation hedge. What do you get when you combine a cult-like following of a digital market with investors who have a personal interest in the market they are telling others to invest in? You receive the biggest financial crush in history. Even the CEO of Binance called it a bloodbath. And he isn't wrong as the total market cap of all cryptocurrencies has declined by more than $2 trillion since the peak last year. What does this tell us about the volatility of cryptocurrencies and the narrative we have been fed by investors such as Kevin O'Leary and Michael Saylor, who were adamant that crypto was the safest bet against inflation and could act as a long-term store of value? Let's get into it. But before we get into the discussion about Bitcoin not being the inflation hedge that people with obvious self-interest tried to sell to us, let's understand what inflation hedges are and how they work in our modern markets. Inflation hedging basically protects the value of an investment in case inflation occurs. Let's say you buy one apple for $10, but as inflation rises, you will need to pay $12 for the same apple. Now imagine it's oil, which went up more than 50% from its cost from the beginning of the year. Or let's say you want to buy a house, but a house that cost a certain amount of the dollars at the beginning of 2022 now costs 40% more. And consider the food that you're eating that's suddenly gotten pricier. However, the scariest thing of all is that even as the prices are going up, your salary hasn't changed at all. Now, let's resume where we left off. Bitcoin was supposed to protect against this and be a safe haven. In the steepest inflation curve seen in 40 years, Bitcoin's myth as a hedge against inflation has been broken. As inflation reached 8.6%, Bitcoin was crushed down to below $20,000. Now, what does that tell you? So what is happening to Bitcoin? Didn't investors call it digital gold last year? when prices for a single Bitcoin had reached close to $70,000? Analysts now are predicting that we will continue to see further dips in the market as it readies itself for a potential crypto winter, where more stagnation will be expected. Of course, COVID is a big reason for this, but even more vital is the elaborate marketing strategy of investors to hype up the market and enjoy the benefits themselves. Nonetheless, the party is over as the stock market crashes and Bitcoin follows. Many institutional investors turned to Bitcoin, thinking that its consistent performance finally showed that it could be a reliable hedge against inflation. We had investors heads deep in the market, such as Michael Saylor, tweet about their thoughts on its adaptability as an inflation hedge. But as the Bitcoin ship sinks as the Titanic once did, everyone is jumping off the bandwagon and lamenting the day they ever bought into this narrative. Look at this chart posted by Larry Tenterelli of Blue Chip Daily where he serves as a positional trader and has been known for his insightful graphs and advice. The chart shows us the one-year relative performance of all commodities against inflation. At the top, you have natural gas, which is understandable because of the conflict in Ukraine and Russia sanctions. As you come down, in the middle, you have gold and ethanol, which serves as a baseline for what inflation hedges need to do, i.e. maintain their value in purchasing power. But the one thing that pops out on the chart is the absence of Bitcoin. The reason for that is Bitcoin's ridiculous downturn at the beginning of the year where it went from $69,000 to where it is now, less than $20,000. A near 70% decrease, which is far below than lumber, which is $46.15. In a recent Twitter flurry, we saw a co-host of the Odds Lot podcast rubbing salt in the wounds of the analysts that had predicted a great year for Bitcoin and were sure of its potential as an inflation hedge with a funny post comparing it to avocados. From the beginning, Bitcoin was never seen as a store of value or inflation hedge, as Satoshi Nakamoto himself never described it like that. The sell-off in cryptocurrencies over the past few months have gotten so bad that it can't just be called a mere crash, as we've grown accustomed to. Bitcoin has crashed multiple times before, such as in 2018, but it has never had an impact like it is having today. A big part of the reason is how mainstream the cryptocurrency became after public endorsements by billionaires such as Elon Musk, Tim Draper, and Matthew Rosen. In fact, many suspect that Musk himself had driven up prices for the meme coin doge, which had an unbelievable surge after Elon's tweet about the coin in 2021. Recently, a $258 billion lawsuit was registered against Elon Musk, Tesla, and SpaceX because of claims of running a Ponzi scheme and profiting billions in returns. So what does this tell us about the state of digital currency in the modern world? It tells us that any digital currency can be manipulated by well-placed ad campaigns, support from the elite, and media focus. It is a no-brainer then that Bitcoins, like any other digital currency, have the same flaws and cannot act as a secure hedge to inflation because of its volatility and its malleable nature. The last 10 days have been especially chaotic as Bitcoin fell from a somewhat stable $30,000 to less than $20,000, a further drop of 30% that was unexpected to say the least. Normally it would be just another drop from the crypto market, something that is quite common. Bitcoin has seen its value drop more than 70% multiple times in the past and has always recovered. So what is so different this time? 
The biggest difference is the timing of the crash. This particular crash is happening at a moment of high inflation, as we head towards a probable recession that might spell the end for cryptocurrencies. Another major difference is that analysts and market leaders were supremely confident that crypto was tailor-made for situations of high inflation. This, however, has been proven wrong, and the myth of digital gold is over for now. Let's remember the original goal of Bitcoin. It was going to be an alternative to fiat money, offering people the chance of making transactions without the use of an intermediary. However, this vision of Bitcoin as an everyday medium for exchange was soon forgotten because of the time it takes to do transactions with it and the complexity associated with the structure of the currency itself. On top of this, Bitcoin is simply too volatile for most people to use. Because if you sell a laptop for a Bitcoin today, there is a chance that it'll be worth much less tomorrow, or you'll end up regretting your decision to use Bitcoin as a transaction medium in the first place. This encourages users to hoard Bitcoin instead of using it. And why not? If you used a Bitcoin to buy a pizza and then found out that it was going to be worth thousands of dollars later on, how would you feel? Not pleasant, I'm sure. So over the years, Bitcoin has become a kind of crypto asset and when high-profile investors such as Bill Miller and Paul Tudor Jones started calling it digital gold, it just became a new fad instead of becoming the stable transactional medium it was supposed to be. The argument goes that since there are only 21 million Bitcoins in the world, their value cannot be inflated like dollars or euros since those can be printed whenever the government wants to. But as we have seen, this is far from the truth. This drop in value for what was once hyped up to be a stable hedge against inflation has caused entire coins to be destroyed entirely as it is in this case of Terra, which went from being worth $60 billion to almost nothing in a matter of weeks. While gold and other commodities have remained relatively stable, Bitcoin has acted like a junkie on steroids, completely tarnishing its image as an alternative to gold that could hold out against growing inflation. Now that the mini bubble of 2021 has popped, it has become entirely clear that there was nothing in particular except to prop the value of these currencies up for speculation and hype. However, Bitcoins still have many uses, such as their use in illicit dark web transactions and tax evasion. So it will not be surprising to see Bitcoin stabilize and rebound, even if entire sections of the crypto ecosystem are wiped off. But once again, the question arises, if Bitcoins can only serve as unreliable investments, then what is the value and will it survive the coming decade? 